Welcome back. In last week we talked about how Australian plants and trees, um, how they have adaptions to be able to help them cope with high salt levels and what those adaptions were. In this video we're going to cover this new syllabus dot point which is still concerning plants and trees. So it says describe adaptations of a range of terrestrial Australian plants that assist in minimizing water loss. So remember that word terrestrial just means land. So um, range of land plants, Australian land plants, uh, that assist in minimizing water loss. So minimizing which is reducing. So describe adaptations of a range of Australian land plants that assist in reducing water loss. Now for the first one, what I've drawn here, or what I have the picture I have here, is of a Hakea sericea, which is also just another name for a um, plant which has thin needle-like leaves. So you can see these needle-like like leaves here that are covered in red. These are really thin compared to normal leaf. So what I've drawn here is I've got two things. I've got two leaves, a broad leaf and a needle leaf. And in the middle I've got the sun, which obviously is yellow. And the reason why is I want to show what happens when it comes to water loss. So you can imagine all plants usually have water on their leaves or close to their leaves, it is tomatas. And remember that's because of transpiration, that, is, that just happens. So you can imagine um, if you have a leaf which has a big surface area, that word surface area comes up quite a bit as well, surface area. And what surface area actually was, was just that whole, so you can imagine surface area is the, literally the surface area of the leaf, so this part. So the surface area of a broad leaf is much more than the surface area of a thin leaf, right? So here is only that much surface area, maybe a third of the surface area of a broad leaf. And if you have more surface area, it means you also have more space for water. So these white, blue droplets with the water droplets. And you can imagine the sun itself would have its sun rays come onto, I'll just do it for both of the leaves, they come onto both of the leaves. And what happens is you have evaporation or transpiration happening, right? So these, here these dots will evaporate. So they will leave and that means water loss. So these blue squiggly lines are meant to be the evaporation happen, right? But if you can see, I mean, I've got, I just had five water droplets evaporating on the broad leaf, whereas only, I only had two water droplets evaporating on a needle-like leaf. So, I mean, uh, there might be, it's just an example, but there might be uh, a lot less, there generally is a lot less evaporation happening on a fin-like leaf compared to a normal broad leaf. And the reason why is because it has a lot less surface area exposed to the sun itself. So that's one adaptation that um, leaves can uh, that trees or plants can have to minimize water loss is these thin like needle like leaves. And the example, so the Australian example is the this is the name of the plant, is the Hakea sericea. That's the plant. Yes, remember what surface area was? Surface area was just the area that is exposed the surface of whatever we're talking about that's exposed. A second example was the waxy cuticle. And the plant that has that is, so it's just one of the plants, but uh, one that you easy to remember is the eucalyptus tree. And that's not, that's not actually the eucalyptus tree, but I'll um, explain why I've chosen that example in a second. But what you can imagine is, again, the, we have the sun here, the yellow, and it would have its light, uh, not lightning, but sun rays and they come onto the actual um, leaf. Now if you have water on top, like if you have water maybe even in the side of the plant here, you could usually have maybe evaporation happening through the leaf, so these could come out and be evaporated because the leaf itself is warmed up because of sun rays. And so that's obviously water loss. But what these eucalyptus trees have is they have something called a, a waxy cuticle, and wax is more or less just an oil. So wax is the same thing as an oil. And if you remember what happens if you have water and oil, water and oil don't mix. So if you have water here, 
you can't have that water going through the oil because they don't mix. So that water would be stuck on the bottom, it wouldn't be able to come out on top. The same thing if you have a waxy cuticle, which I drew here in, in that dark greenish color. That waxy cuticle makes sure that we actually have none of this happening. So these um, water molecules inside the leaf can't evaporate through that waxy cuticle because they can't actually leave, they can't penetrate oil. Because remember, oil and water are not mixable. So this water can't pass through the, the waxy cuticle, which is the top layer of the plant, right? So the top layer of the plant, of that leaf, of a, of a eucalyptus tree, is that, is that um, waxy cuticle. In this picture, you can see the picture, you've got your, you have these um, rain droplets, and this, this might actually, might have been rain, right? So you would have rain coming, but the same reason why um, water can't leave is also the reason why water can't enter. So there might have been rain, and you can see these water droplets stay on top of the actual leaf. And the reason why is because that waxy cuticle prevents it from going inside. Uh, so it can't go in or they can't come out. So that's generally good for the plant because it, it wants to reduce water loss. So again, having waxy cuticle, cuticle is another way to reduce or minimize water loss. Reduce water loss because you, you can't have water from the inside being evaporating out or transpirating out. It doesn't work. Uh, third example is the spinifex which has rolled up leaves. Again imagine this we have this sun here which is drawn in yellow and its sun rays will actually go you know, on both of these examples. We've got normal versus rolled up. So normal is this one and rolled up is this one. And this is actually how Spinifex looks like when it comes to reality itself. Um, and you can imagine that again there would be droplets all over surface area of that grass because the, the grass itself is the leaf. So that is a leaf. So we've got um, water here and we've got water here. But if you look at how much of that is exposed to the sun in both examples, you might be able to notice that there's less surface exposed in the rolled up compared to the normal. So with this one, you can literally have every single one of these droplets evaporating and losing that water because they're all exposed to the sun. Whereas in this example, the rolled up one, the rolled up one, we only have these ones being exposed. The ones which are rolled up don't. So the ones in here, these ones, and these ones, and these ones, are not exposed to sun, so they wouldn't evaporate. So having rolled up leaves, like the spinifex, the example of the spinifex, the plant example of the spinifex, which is this one, um, reduces the amount of water exposed to the sun, which means less warming up, less heating, and less evaporation, less transpiration in general. Right? So that's another way that we can reduce water loss is having rolled up leaves and the example would be the spinifex. Now the last one I'll cover in this video is the hairy leaves. So if you, can, if you look over here, the hairy leaves um, are just literally leaves that have hair sticking on them. So I've got again the sun in the middle in yellow and the two normal versus hairy leaves. I'm going to draw a couple of water molecules again in blue. Hopefully you can see those water molecules. I'll just have them here and same ones here. When the sun comes and hits them, what actually happens is obviously a normal one, we have all of them evaporating or transpirating. So transpiration is just a word for evaporation when it comes to plants. So we don't really say evaporation for plants, we say transpiration. And these all evaporate, so these all leave. So blue squiggly line for evaporation. And here, this maybe is my start to evaporate, but as soon as it hits the leaf, uh, the hair sticking off, so the brown thing is the hair, it will stop. So it might start, but then it gets stuck. It might start, get stuck. So you have less evaporation happening on hairy leaves because these hair, these hairs prevent evaporation. So hairs prevent um, transpiration. Again, I just said we shouldn't say uh, we shouldn't say evaporation when it comes to plants. We say transpiration. So the hairs prevent transpiration, right? So again, this is another adaption that some 
um, plants have to reduce, minimize, to minimize water loss. So let's sum up all the four ones again. We've got thin-like needles, needle-like leaves, and, and the reason why is because they have less surface area compared to a broad leaf, and that means less evaporation because there's less water molecules on the surface of that fin compared to that broad leaf. We have waxy cuticles. The waxy cuticles make sure that we don't have any of the water inside the leaf being able to penetrate the top layer. And that top layer was that um, waxy cuticle and it can't penetrate because waxy cuticle, cuticle is actually made of fat or of oil and water can't, can't penetrate oil because they don't mix. So that's another way that we can reduce water loss. We also have the roll-up leaves and the roll-up leaves just make sure that whatever is rolled up it's not exposed to the sun. So for example, spinifex is, is a plant that has that. And the things that are not exposed to the sun don't get transpirated. So transpiration was the evaporation of water on leaves or in plants. Last one was the hairy leaves. And the hairy leaves compared to normal leaves make sure that whenever you have evaporation happening or transpiration happening that you have this water molecule which tr starts transpirating but again it gets stuck on the hair and then stays on the plant itself. So those four examples of how we can minimize water loss. So hopefully that was helpful.